ignoring the opening dua before the salah be uh, or after the salah begins before the recitation of the Fatiha. So the dua that is recited after you say Allahu Akbar and that dua subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak ismuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk and then there are other duas now ignoring this dua in and of itself and just starting Allahu Akbar and continuing of the salah again this is an error in and of itself why because number one the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is a hadith narrated in uh, sahih muslim where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always used to start his salah with the takbir and then the narration continues that he would also start it with some type of dua or some type of adhkar now the question here is what if you don't recite the dua is the salah still valid the answer is yes but again you lose a tremendous amount of reward because of this um, according to one narration the reward for saying that dua after the takbir before the fatiha is jannah and you can enter in any bab or any door that you wish of the, of the jannah itself next error is not raising the hand for the takbiratul ihram now raising the hands in salah no one knows what the wisdom is behind it how do you raise your hand in salah very simple the prophet ﷺ indicated to us that when you raise your hands try not to keep your fingers spread apart but try to keep them together and do it with a little bit of sakina a little bit of tranquility and ease and comfort don't do what some people they do and they really really keep their fingers tight so you don't want to do that be very calm be very relaxed your fingers are together next error is not shaking the the tongue when reciting Surah Al-Fatiha or any of the adhkar in Salah. Listen to this again. Not moving the tongue or the lips in Surah Al-Fatiha or any of the Quran and, and adhkar or remembrance during the Salah. According to the majority, when I say majority, this is including all the four madhahib, that this person who does this, their Salah becomes invalid their salah becomes batil and invalid for doing that. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that this is one of the ways that indicates a person involved in some kind of adhkar and remembrance and recitation of the Qur'an itself. So this is one of your strongest indications is that you should do this. And now even when you go into the ruku', same idea. Subhana Rabbil Azim. And you don't have to say it out loud, of course, but you want to at least make sure that your lips are moving. Third point when it comes to this. Suppose that you're praying Maghrib or Isha or Fajr, the salahs that are recited out loud. And suppose you recite them quietly to yourself. What is the smallest amount of qudra or volume in your recitation that's permitted for it to be valid? Now here scholars have a difference of opinion. You know, Imam Abu Hanifa has something, Imam Shafi'i has something else. Imam Abu Hanifa says that it is permissible for you to pray and just to simply move your lips. Even if you can't hear yourself. As long as you're just moving your lips, some action is happening with your lips, it's fine. Imam Shafi'i, and if I remember correctly, Imam Malik as well, they said that just simply moving your lips is not enough. What you need to do is you also need to be able to hear yourself. So if you're praying Fajr, and let's say, you know, somebody's sleeping there or children are, are asleep, so you don't want to disturb them. So you decide to pray quietly to yourself. The least you should do is you should be able to recite quietly enough that you can hear yourself and that is the minimum according to the jumhur or the majority of ulama and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.